Yo guys, what is going on? Cryptic TMG back again. You know what time it is. It's time for me to drop that knowledge and line you guys up with the Bentley setup. And before I start anything, bro, hey, listen, you guys are blessed today. You are absolutely blessed today. I grinded this setup all day and I wish, I wish I had this setup yesterday, bro. I wish. Now, you guys who watched the live stream yesterday would have seen you know whereabouts my pace was what i was able to do in the lobby bro listen let me show you the lap that i did for my uh for my hot lap let me show you that this is not even a hot lap sorry this is the lap i did with, with fuel all right i managed to hit a 159.9 bro 96 liters flying the car is flying <laughs> i wish i had this set up yesterday bro but we're gonna get stuck into the meat and bones of it let's go um I made changes, bro. I made... It's just a, a completely different setup now, okay? Um, I managed to make the, the back end... The, the problem was, was the back end was quite... You know, when when you got on the throttle on the exit of some corners, the back end really did step out quite a lot. Now, if you do take the, the wrong line or you carry it too much speed in, you're just offline, then sometimes it can kick out just a little, but it's nowhere near as severe as what it was for me yesterday in the race. Um, down to electronics now, I've been going to 4 ABS. I think it's just a little bit better for the hairpin. Um, you know, if you really want to, you know, get everything out of this setup, then if you're one of them people who's used to playing like F1 games and you want to change things during the lap, it might be slightly beneficial to, to try something like that. Um, 96 liters, that should be fine for the hour. Um, tire sets and stuff, of course, that's your choice. And obviously for changing the tires you want the same tire pressures because i don't believe that the temperature actually changed during the race um now the mechanical grip this is where it was quite different i believe my my rear end was quite stiff for the uh for the race yesterday um steering ratio again this is something that you know probably gonna decide probably gonna be around 11 or 12 for you by the way i've got my wheel set up what i changed um on my i actually changed my steering ratio again so my steering ratio for me 15 makes the car feel a lot more stable but for the normal folk 11 or 12 should do that's normally what the bentley's on i believe um yeah and just go ahead and copy what i've got right here and tell it guys listen i couldn't believe the pace i've been able to get i don't even like suzuka i'm not gonna lie i do not like this track but the pace i've been able to get out of the car around here i actually feel confident around here bro like for the first time ever all right especially in this car anyway um again we fiddled with the dampers man we made sure that um that, you know the front really turns into the corners without getting mad oversteer i will give you guys a little bit of a warning that this car is very much you gotta keep it on the line man if you push into corners too much or too hard too far especially turn one you're probably gonna get a bit of a slide on but that is that is the nature of the beast i'm afraid man like this setup is fast, bro. I don't normally say a setup is fast, but this shit is quick. For a Bentley, this feels quick. I was nowhere near a 59 yesterday. I believe my fastest race lap yesterday was a 2011. Obviously, I didn't get to improve my first stint because obviously I had the crash or whatnot. But to be 1.1 seconds faster is insane, bro. Literally insane. Even when I was practicing yesterday, my fastest was like... You know, even in practice, when when the lobby felt you know normal, I was at like a two minute six or something. I've even improved at seven temps on that, so I know what else to tell you, lads. All right, for the race itself, I've actually gone up on the ride height at the front. You need 57 on the front ride height. That's so you can sort of, when you get to the Lesmos, you can sort of go across the curbs without it really bouncing you out too far on the left hand side, which will of course give you invalidation, and you don't want to be carrying around warnings and penalties and shit during your lap you just want to be able to ride them curbs comfortably um we've got 77 on the rear ride height gives you a lot of the rotation through the first sector man it is definitely needed because that's one of the areas that the bentley struggles surprisingly but um we're gonna go on and get to the uh go on and get to the qualifying setup it is a little bit different boom so here's the quality setup in the most part you can see i've actually put one one click um less of of toe or more should i say towards the uh um one click more of minus toe so it's on minus 0 0.3 or minus 0 0.03 should i say um 
has to give it a little bit more rotation again this is all about just getting the lap together you can look abs is is down to you whether you want to go keep it on four or go down to two or stick it on three whichever one works for you guys um 12 liters of fuel should allow you to do two hot laps pull it back in the pits two hot laps again there will be an out lap two hot laps um all this is round about the same this is a slightly more aggressive setup again with the steering ratio up to you guys 12 or 11 is probably where you're going to be at um onto the dampers slightly different again most this is just basically geared towards lap time i managed to get a low 59 when i did try this setup um i managed to get a low 59 compared to what i did yesterday i'm like a i'm literally a second quicker i'm a second quicker in the quali i'm a second quicker on the race pace so i would advise you guys man listen hey trust me <laughs> try this shit all right um again the ride height is a little bit higher and the front ride height is a little bit lower so again it's going to be a lot more sort of oversteery okay again if you're struggling with oversteer and you feel like it's a bit too much you can just go down on the rear if the front end's turning in too much just go up on the front but for me to get the lap time out in the uh to be honest i was i was quite a way up man i ended up on like a 59.3 and i could have easily hit a 58 but because i'm just, i was just desperate i was so far up on the time coming out of uh spoon i absolutely floored it back in stepped out lost a ton of time ends up with a 59.3 so um yeah 58s in there <laughs> okay but guys that is the setup man i will leave you guys with a uh with the hot lap of what which hot lap should i do do you want to see the quality hot lap or oh you know i'll play the, the race hot lap man because i feel like that's more applicable for for you guys man so hope you guys do enjoy the setup man it's cryptic tmg remember to like and subscribe hit the notification guys hit the notification bell you know what i'm trying to say i'm out here all right but anyway let's get stuck into the lap enjoy the setup I'm kind of going to talk you guys through the lap. Um, so let's get into the, the last chicane, which can be, you can lose so much time at the last chicane. Obviously right now we're heading flat out. Let me just zoom this out a little bit more. 
flat out down the straight. Now, some people might try and be tempted to run less wing. Do not run less wing in the Bentley, bro. Do not run less wing in it. Let me tell you why. You're going to gain zero down the straight running less wing in the Bentley because every, every corner that has, every straight on this track that has a corner before it, that corner before it is so dependent on rear traction that running less wing means you get less traction at the corner and then you just do not generate that speed down the straight anyway. So forget trying to run lower than 10 wing around, around Suzuka in the Bentley. It just it ain't the one. Unless you're like insanely an insane alien that can just handle, you know, the, the car on the knife edge, the traction on the knife edge, it's just not worth it, bro. But um, going into turn one. And this, this corner is pretty tricky, man. You sort of got a trail break into this corner. Um, you don't want to brake too hard because that unbalances the car a little bit. I sort of keep a little bit of throttle on at times. But you, you sort of want almost a late apex so you can get on the power sooner and straighten the car up. Because in the Bentley, the more you can straighten the car, the less you're actually going to get wheel spin. You want to really ride the curbs in this section. And just like, sort of just get off the throttle at this point. Let the car sort of roll through. Then back on the throttle again. I actually could have taken more curb. Again, sometimes just gently, gently apply a little bit of throttle. And this, this corner I find quite difficult, man. This is where I think I lose a lot of time. You have to give up so much when you feel like you can just mash the throttle. You have to give up so much just to get the run through the corner, man. So you can see me playing with the throttle, balancing it out. But what you really want to do is get on this curb because it actually drags your car around to the left. It actually helps bring your car to the left. And again, you'll see here, I have a little bit of a moment. Just because I missed that curb, I wasn't able to really commit to the throttle. You see the back end step out a little bit. You know? Just have a small moment. Probably cost me maybe half a tenth. As we go into the Lesmos, I'm going to fly over the first bit. The Bentley can handle it, especially with 57 on the front ride height. Um, try not to run too wide. So this section is pretty difficult, man. Two corners that are pretty easy to invalidate your lap. We well, managed, managed to get through there okay. Again, this is a corner where it's a lot, very easy to lose time, man. Sort of on a break in a straight line, just as you come from the kink. And um, hitting the apex here, man, is, is tough. You probably want to take a little bit of a wider line in there so you can straighten it up a little bit on the way out and um, get a better run out of this corner. Pretty important. Now, this is what I was talking about. Again, the last corner, very important to get good acceleration. As we come to Spoon now as well, very important to get good acceleration out of this corner too. But as you enter this corner, I start breaking about maybe 10 meters before the green astro turf on the right hand side starts and i actually get a little bit of a slide on here but it sort of lines us up perfectly and we're able to get on the throttle without getting wheel spin and this corner is notorious for wheel spin really difficult man so um try not to maybe not push it as hard as i did i got quite lucky with um the sort of slide that i got on i have a small lift here you'll see it gentle lift i even feathered the throttle so really just flying through that corner try and break um you want to break so you can sort of mash this inside curb i actually miss it i should have taken a lot more curb which allows me to straighten up the exit but the bentley takes loads of curb at the chicane man i took i took maybe i got on the throttle a bit too soon the back end started sliding around a little bit so there's even more time in it man so imagine to get a 59.9 in the bentley with uh, 96 liters on i was happy with man definitely happy um way quicker than i was able to do yesterday so i'm 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 very happy with this setup guys so i hope you do enjoy it man as i said before remember to like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace